Hi everyone and happy Tuesday to you. Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. We are tracking a developing major hurricane in the Atlantic and we need to watch it closely. Some of the models show a recurve, but we know from history that we can't let our guard down with that. As always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel for all things uh, tropical updates, severe weather, and wintry weather. When it comes to severe weather, I will be watching it closely. And in this case, we have a 100% chance of tropical development over the next two days and a 100% percent chance over the next seven days. Pretty odd to see that, but that's just the National Hurricane Center telling us they're going to issue advisories later today on what is now Invest 95. You see that 100 and 100 at the bottom of the screen and the general direction. This thing is set to take off and become a monster later today through tomorrow, so we need to watch it closely. The models do show a recurve, but they should also show a monster. And We know that as we've watched these same hurricanes in these same locations that Florida and the Carolinas especially cannot not let our guards down when it comes to systems like this. It's already got 35 mile per hour winds. It's moving toward the west northwest quickly at 18 miles per hour. It is set to slow down, I will tell you. So as we watch this closely and move forward, uh, we will likely get a track later today, which will give us the ability to kind of hone in on where this is going with the National Hurricane Center. But I do have fresh model data to show you right now. These are the spaghetti models. Each one of these are tropical models. They're specially fine tuned to track tropical activity and they do show that recurve a little closer to the United States than I would like but they do show a recurve but we know the stronger the more west it goes and this system is set to become a monster probably a cat four cat five over the next uh, three days as we get toward the weekend let me show you the intensity forecast they show it basically going through a cat one into a cat two maybe even approaching cat three by Saturday Sunday let me show you the latest computer model from the European it did so well with the previous storms we've had so far this year, including Adalia. As we watch closely, this is likely developing into a hurricane by Thursday, into a major hurricane by Friday, Saturday. You're likely looking at a Cat 3 or a Cat 4 just north of the Lesser Antilles, Windward Islands, uh, you know, not so comfortably close to Puerto Rico right there. We, it's a little closer than we would like, right? This thing is set to become a really strong hurricane. And we know from history, Matthew, uh, I, I can name off several here that the stronger it gets, the more west it's going to want to move. The more It's like moving a school bus, okay? It's a lot easier to mo move a Toyota Camry, right? But when you're trying to swing a, a school bus uh, to turn, to make that turn north, it's a lot harder to turn a big school bus. Well, that's what this system's set to become, is a big system, which will likely become a major hurricane. Name-wise, we're likely looking at Lee or Margo. Probably Lee, but one of the two will likely get uh, this storm. All right, here we are at next Monday. This would be about a week from now, likely dealing with a Cat 5 that's just east of the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas, and that's when it's set to try to turn to the north. The models do a good job at trying to guess what happens in these type situations, but they also sometimes underestimate how hard it is to move a storm of this magnitude. We're relying on a big dip in the jet stream, cooling down the east coast at this time next week, likely looking at a pretty cool, a pretty stout cool front. However, it's got to be powerful enough. Remember, we're steering a bus, not a Toyota Camry. Look at the size of this. Could be a formidable threat toward Bermuda as we go toward this time next week. So we've got time to track. And of course, we've been watching Adalia. Now we're watching deeper out into the Atlantic. We've got uh, fresh satellite data right here showing we've got a spin in this and looking at it closer, it's definitely got some organization. You've got plenty of convection firing up here at the center. And you've got the spin, so it's already a healthy storm, and it's entering a very favorable environment. There's the center of circulation with some fairly strong storms all over it. All right, we have access to the Canadian and the American models at this point. They are both showing that curve to the north at about the same time as that European model I showed you a minute ago. But again, we're relying on a big dip in the jet stream. Let me show you that because honestly, that's key to this whole storm system and where this major hurricane will go and why I think we really, really need to watch this from Florida to the Georgia coast to the Carolina coast. Look at the feathered look to this. This is basically um, uh, a buzzsaw, as, as we call it. When it's this strong, this 
formidable. I mean, it, it looks like a buzzsaw, and this will likely be a major category four or five hurricane at this time next week. So relying on this dip, dip in the jet stream, so the jet stream is dipping down like this, and it's bringing in some cooler air to the east coast this time next week. It's that time of the year we rely on those, but if that cool front comes in slower, weaker, anything different, this major hurricane is going to get closer to the United States. Here it is a different way. This is the European model showing this major hurricane bubbling toward the west of note. There's not much else out there that's going to be a threat or even close to the United States. That's good news. So here we are a week from today. The system's turning the north. There's our dip in the jet stream over the Carolinas and Georgia, Alabama, cooling down a bit after a big warm-up. And here it goes. It steers it out to sea closer to Bermuda. Let's look at the GFS model. Same story. Shows a big bubbling up of a strong storm. A little bit later, getting stronger on the GFS model. Shows a wide storm too. I mean, this is a big monster. I mean, this is not just a compact stout storm. It's a wide, big strong storm, okay? And again, the big ones are harder to move. It will, if it was a compact strong storm, I would say, okay, the cold front, the jet stream's more than likely to move it out. But when it's this big, it's going to try to trend to go west. And I would suspect the models this week will probably get a little bit more uncomfortably close to the United States. I'm really hoping the recurve happens and the models are onto something here. But when you're seven, eight days out, it is one of those situations where if it's showing that now, you know that it's probably going to swing a little bit one way or the other. That's just what history tells us. And the stronger it gets, the more west it's going to want to go. This GFS model also shows a recurve between Bermuda and the Outer Banks, and then it shows it moving up toward the north. Then there's a couple more waves we need to watch back behind it, but you'd have significant upwelling. With a Cat 4 or Cat 5, it's going to bring cooler water up from the bottom of the Atlantic, and that storm in its path or in its wake would probably have some cooler waters to deal with. When it's that strong of a monster, it brings up cooler water from the bottom of the ocean and can sometimes make it harder for other storms to develop down lower. So sea surface temperatures right now are just off the charts in these areas. You got 84, 85, maybe even 86 degrees. Uh, very warm, uh, plenty warm to support uh, hurricane category three or stronger in these waters. Uh, of course, the fuel growing into the Atlantic, of course, this area where Adalia formed uh, pretty much off the charts. You just don't want to see anything get in that area. But uh, the conditions are, are pretty much equally as favorable as you get closer to the Bahamas. So the storm system looks to track somewhere in these waters and then move up like this. So if it stays in here, that's going to at least support it, uh, not weaken it, but probably fuel it as it gets into these uh, darker colors right in here. And then if it were to go near the Gulf Stream, that would definitely provide ample fuel for it. 2023 names, we've uh, blown right through them. Lee and Margot would be the next on the list. Uh, probably going to get both of them named. There's one way out into the Atlantic that's likely to get named this week as well. Not a threat to the United States. So one of these, whichever foreign's first, Lee is likely to be our formidable threat. So uh, what will likely be tropical depression today, probably tropical storm Lee later on tonight or tomorrow. And then uh, we'll probably have Margo form at the same time. But uh, that one is not set to be a threat to the United States. And of course, we are entering the peak of hurricane season. As you know, September is our most active month when it comes to tracking hurricanes. Again, folks, if you're not already subscribing, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications for all things severe weather. When it comes to hurricanes, especially my eyes are peeled for the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida. Uh, you know, that's my specialty is severe weather. So my commitment to you is to be no nonsense. I'm going to shoot you straight straight and I'll keep you posted along the way. Have a good day, everybody.